What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. For today's video, I'm gonna be guiding you guys through making this pot of gold here for St. Patrick's Day. I'm gonna be doing it step by step from modeling it, exporting and importing, and also how to easily fill it with coins. Before we start, I also wanna tell you guys to make sure you have a reference image ready, and also be sure to like, subscribe, and share the video. All right guys, so it's time to make that pot of gold. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is press shift plus A at the same time. Then we're gonna go over to mesh here and add a UV sphere. And this is what we're gonna use to make our roundish pot of gold and to get that round shape on it. Now, of course, you can use a cube and then turn it into a sphere manually through subdivisions. And that's what I like to do a lot of the times. But for simplicity, we're just gonna be using a UV sphere. So what you're gonna wanna do next is click it using whatever keybind you have to click. This will either be left click or right click. For me, it's a left click. And then we're gonna scale it up just in this case. And I'm also gonna do GX to move it on the center. Usually it'll move on the center or it'll be somewhere near the center on its own. But if you have to, press the G key and use X or Z or Y to move it about or whatever method you like to use. And then after that, we're gonna press tab to go into edit mode. We're gonna also press one to make sure we're in vertice select mode. And then we're gonna go up here in the top right, and we're gonna go to these two little squares. This is where you find all your shaders and stuff. But we're just gonna focus on these for now. And this is toggle x-ray. This will allow us to see through our mesh. It'll become translucent. You can see on the other side of it. I'll click that. And then I'll also line up on the Y. And then I will press B. And I'm gonna delete the top vertices here so it's going to end right here and it'll be like a half sphere almost and so we're going to press delete it'll come up with this menu what do i want to delete in this case we're just going to click vertices and now we have our half sphere we can go out of x-ray mode again and then i can use scroll wheel to move about and pan around the object and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pan to the bottom of the mesh here i'm going to press three and then i'm going to press c and this is brush select mode but i'm going to drag my mouse all over these, holding down while I select. And then what I'm gonna do is do S and then press Z, scale it on the Z axis, and then I'm gonna press zero to make it flat. And then I'm gonna press enter, and that will confirm the action. And next, I'm gonna do G and then press C and move it up so we get more of a flat bottom here. Now the next step gets a little bit more tricky, but it's pretty easy, it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna click this up here, but we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click this. And what this is called is proportional editing. This will basically stretch the shape based on a specific fall off that you have selected. So right now I have sphere selected. And this will kind of make it stretch out into something like a sphere, like whatever selection you have, as you scale it or move it, it'll try and get a spherical shape off of it. So like if I was to drag it all the way out here, it try and be like a round bump going that way, as you can tell by the shape that it shows. But just for example, if I do that with proportional editing on, I can move it on the X axis. And as you can see, it's kind of rounded out like a sphere there. Instead, we're gonna be scaling it. And so we're gonna press S and then you can use your scroll wheel going up and down to increase or decrease how much of an outreach it has towards other vertices. So if I was to scroll all the way in, I wouldn't have much reach to all the other surrounding vertices but if I scroll way out it'll affect the whole thing but we only want about half of it somewhere around there we want to like bump it out but not too much you just want to keep doing that until you get your desired shape you know you can keep going through turning it on and off loop selecting by doing shift alt which I forgot to mention earlier if you want to select one of these loops as easily as I did alt plus shift then click on that loop and then that's how you can start editing specific areas so I'm gonna go ahead and work my shape around and try and get the best shape possible and then we're gonna get to the next step. All right, so that's gonna do it for the general shaping for me. I've got a reasonable pot of gold shape here. I think it's pretty good. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and change this down here. It's a little bit too sharp of an edge for me, so I'm gonna change it. But the next thing we're gonna to wanna to get into here is the little lip around the top of the pot of gold. And this is where all that, all the money sits in, or the, the gold pieces, this is where all of those sit in. So we're gonna press E to extrude. We're gonna press Z to make sure it's on the Z axis and it's locked there. And then we're gonna slowly start to bevel it out kind of manually. And so after we've beveled it out to our liking, we're gonna keep extruding until we get like that rounded lip part and start to curve it back in. So I'm gonna keep adjusting it here and do as I need using the same commands, extrude, scale, and then move using the G key going up and down side to side 
whatever I need. And so some of you might be wondering, hold on, a lot of this is inside out and there's only one face that we can see. And so yes, we're gonna properly make it hollow and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. And the first thing we're gonna do is click F and that's going to give us a new face to work with. And then we're gonna extrude that and we're gonna scale it about, making sure it doesn't go out of those boundaries. This is gonna be the inside of it and it doesn't have to be anything special. This is gonna get filled up anyways later on. This might be the trickiest part of the video, pretty much just because we have to extrude off of a concave shape, but I'm here to help you guys so it won't be that difficult. I'm gonna do Control R, and this is what's gonna allow us to do a loop cut and slide. We're just gonna not slide at all, we're just gonna click Control R, and then Enter, or whatever your click button is. And then we're gonna go over to the other side and do the same thing because it didn't do that because we have a non-uniform face down there. So these vertices aren't actually connected. And now that we have both sides done like that, we need to extrude some handles or whatever those little ring things are on the side. And these are basically just gonna be like things that stick out. We'll add rings separately because it would be way too hard to shape them off of a square object like this, especially for beginners. All right. and. I'm thinking it'll look better if we do one more loop cut and I accidentally slid it there. So we're going to do control Z to undo that. And then I'll do control R again. Now that one went, that one went all the way around because all these vertices are connected. So it'll do that. So it's already done on this side as well. And now we're going to go up to here into our transform pivot point. It's right next to the proportional editing and the default selection will be like a chain link. We're going to drop that box down and then we're going to go to individual origins. Then we're going to press E and we're going to extrude. And this will extrude them individually on their own axis. So as you could see, it drew those lines and that's the direction they're extruding. So I'm going to redo these because I didn't want them. And we're going to go back up here, go back to median point. Then we're going to do GZ to move them to become more straight. And if you really want to, you can go through and select these top faces. Scale, Z, zero, like we did earlier. And then you can do the same with these, except on the X axis. If we want a little bit more detail, which I'll go for, screw them out and scale them down. I guess this will be it for it. And then we'll add some rings on the sides here. So it's really easy. In Blender, they already have some pre-made torus rings. So we're gonna do Shift A again. And then we're gonna go to mesh and find torus. Then we're gonna do GX so we can see our mesh. Scale it down, and move it up. Now that I have a better view of it, I'm gonna press R to rotate. So we're gonna wanna rotate it on the X and the Z axis so that way it goes up and sideways. We're gonna do R and then we're gonna do shift Y and then we're gonna do 90 and this will give us the exact position we want to line up with our pot. We're gonna do G on the X. We're gonna drag it over here. We're gonna drag it on the Z. And then we're gonna rotate it a little bit on the Y axis. Kind of rough, it doesn't look that good. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And while I'm in edit mode, I'm gonna turn proportional editing on, go to smooth as my fall off, scale this down. Well, we'll scale it up a bit more so we get a better and then yeah that, that looks about right now it's not intersecting with the bottom face and one more thing you guys should do to make it look good is to do shade smooth on all of your meshes to do shade smooth and another tip to make it look even better get rid of these wacky normals weird topology is to go down to the object data properties this green triangle go to normals and click auto smooth this will kind of make it more appealing to look at. So it's on the other side. So we're going to do control C, control V. We're going to do G on X axis. Move it all the way over to where we want. We're going to have to rotate it on the Y axis again, kind of like opposite to the other one. That's pretty much going to do it for our cauldron. Now we're going to have to export them. So I'm going to keep these separate because I want to make the rings golden. So I'm going to do shift click on the two rings, right click, click join or use control J like it says here. And now these are one object. All right. And now what we're going to do is click the object. We're going to go to file export and you might want to do FBX. I like to do OBJ. You can do either. I prefer OBJ. And so I'm just going to do it in OBJ. I'm going to click OBJ and then I'm going to do selection only objects as OBJ objects. Make sure that's the selection. And you can see I already saved it, but just repeat the same process. I named it Gold Cauldron just because, you know, pot might get censored by Roblox. You never know. So I'm just going to play it safe by calling it a Gold Cauldron. And really, in reality, it is a Gold Cauldron. It really is a cauldron. It looks just like one. But well, that should work. And then I already have it saved, I can just cancel. I'm gonna select the rings, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, name it something different so it doesn't get replaced. Gold rings 
Uh, let's do gold cauldron rings. And now we're going to go import them into Roblox. All right, guys. So now we're going to import that cauldron. And this is pretty simple. We're going to do control I or right click insert object and do mesh part like that. And then I'm going to click anchor just so if we test it and I get up close to it, it won't move all over the place. Also, I have some plans for how we're going to get gold coins in there, which you guys might like. And then we're going to go over here into the properties, make sure they're open in the view tab. You'll see that it's a big button that says properties. And then we're going to open and find our file. And so here are mine. I'm going to click gold cauldron and this will load it in. Do whatever you want with your settings. I wouldn't load in object location data just so it spawns in front of you. And then I'm also going to get the handles real quick. So here are the rings or the handles, whatever you want them to be. And then I'm going to color them yellow and then them metal. Give them that golden look. And that doesn't look very golden. We're going to do some color editing. And there we go. That looks fine. And then we're going to go into here and let's make the cauldron metal as well. We'll make it black. And then of course we want to make sure we name our model. We're going to name it gold bot. And then that'll be it. And now we gotta fill this thing up with some gold coins. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that real quick. So you can use a part or a mesh for this, whatever you wanna do, but I'm gonna use a cylinder part for this just to make it easy. And I'm going to scale it down, get something about coin size. I think this should be good. I don't want them to be like a bunch of tiny ones, you know, could make it pretty decent size. I'm gonna copy the color from these handles and apply it to this one as well, make sure metal. We're going to leave these unanchored and what we're really going to do is drag these. We're going to drag this and put it over the pot of gold. And now we're going to duplicate it a ton of times. So you might want to group it in this case, just so you contain all of the pieces in a group. And I think that's a great idea. That way you don't have to select a bunch of parts and you can just select the model for when we have to copy it. And then I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to move some of these around. And then after this, I'm going to duplicate them when I have them all in their positions like this. All of these, these should all fall in the pot. And what I'm going to do also to make sure they fall in the pot is alt click this cauldron. And you know what? Let's have that for both of them. I'm going to go down into the properties and find collision fidelity under the collision window box area, whatever you want to call it, the drop down. I'm going to do that drop down and find precise convex composition. I think it's decomposition. Yeah, it's a decomposition, whatever. And now this will precisely calculate the angles inside of this mesh. So we should be okay and not run into any issues with collision. So now I'm gonna take all these parts and I'm gonna duplicate them a ton. And you know, I don't wanna lag too much. So we're gonna leave it like this. You can do it as many times as you want. Just know that it might crash your studio and it might lag you out a ton. So be prepared. You might have to do it in multiple stages, which is okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a run test. We're going to watch these coins basically explode and what i'm hoping for is that they fall into it just like that yeah and that that pretty much is it and so you want to repeat that process until you get to the desired amount of coins inside of your cauldron but we're gonna yeah i i think we can do some more it's not lagging too bad all right so i did a ton more and maybe it'll fill up now maybe it might start overflowing i have no idea maybe it'll explode yeah yeah okay yeah that's pretty good there we go Kind of intersecting like crazy and yeah there's that lag but uh yeah that's a good level and that's a neat little trick for filling an empty object like this if you guys want to and if you really need to you can probably go down here and eliminate a bunch of these but the secret here is to select this select this model copy it while it's like this stop this test and then paste it and now we have that model in here pretty cool and like i said earlier if you really need to can do like alt drag select oh i'm trying to dodge those trees in the background and then just delete a bunch of these that should be okay and this will cover most of the surface I stand a little bit corrected but uh for the most part that worked out all right that pretty much does it so yes like i just said that is it for this video so if you guys learned something or you were able to create a gold pot just like this one please make sure to like subscribe and share the video with your friends family and even the trees outside. I would super highly appreciate that because it helps my channel grow a ton and I think we'll be growing pretty quickly at the rate I'm starting to upload. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.